always make it a little bit interesting every time. So whatever happened last year, it's not going to be the same this year. So that's why it's a surprise event. And that surprise event, it's even surprised me. We already worked it out, I suppose this morning or yesterday, we did a bit of work here. So, <laughs> so we have some interesting things are going to happen. But first of all, of course, we need people to come in. We've got another sort of uh, 10 minutes before people are expected to come in. A few of those are coming in from the community hall, which is wonderful. So that community hall, uh, this is much more comfortable here, I reckon. It's carpeted and it's better sound and it also can be recorded. So your great wisdom and kindness and compassion can be spread all over the world. Is that a good idea? Okay. But the other thing I always say, the reason why we started these New Year's Eve events was to make sure that people had some place to go on a New Year's Eve. People have complained to me when I first came here. They have their friends, they have their work colleagues, would always invite them to go to a party somewhere. And their parties would always have alcohol. And they said they didn't want to go to a party and almost be forced to take alcohol. And, but nevertheless, they just did uh, want to go somewhere on New Year's Eve. So the obvious solution was making sure we have a party here, a party without alcohol. And you can still have just as much fun. And then when you do have so much fun, I always like to ask people, when you go home after uh, the event is finished, please try and find a police car so you can pass them and they'll always stop you. And when you find a police car and they stop you and then they ask you, where have you been? So I've been to a party. Have you been drinking? Yes. Water, orange juice, tea. <laughs> and when they take your alcohol level in the blood, it's a wonderful experience to see the policeman's face when they test your alcohol level on the first day of the year at half past 12 in the morning and they find it's total zero. So anyhow, it's worth driving around a bit longer, a long way around, and see if you can find a policeman because that's really cool. Of course, if you tell them you've been to Ajahn Brahm's party, I think they know by now, so they say, oh, go on. <laughs> they won't even test you. But of course, I think you also know those stories which I tell about when people uh, have problems because they get talked into drinking alcohol on New Year's Eve. And, okay, I'm sure you must have remembered this or heard it before. That was the time the man went to a party and at the, after, at the party did drink some alcohol. And on the way home, he decided to drive his car home instead of taking a taxi. Because sometimes the taxis were so uh, busy and took a long time to arrive. So he took his own car home and he got stopped in a, a road traffic block by the police. They were testing everybody for alcohol. So he knew he was done for. Anyone who does a U-turn, that's an admission of guilt. <coughs> so he waited in line. When it was his turn to be tested, they did ask him in those days, can you please step outside your car? So he stepped outside his car, he was staggering a bit because he was a bit drunk. And just before they put the, uh, the breathalyzer tube in his mouth, there was a sound of crash. That's not a really crash sound. Is that a crash sound? Where's Eddie? He's got lots of drums and stuff. Anyway, it's the sound of a car crash. <laughs> One of the cars going slightly too fast had gone into the rear end of another car. And so what happened? The policeman said, it's more important that I check up on this road traffic accident rather than check your alcohol level. He said, get in your car and go home. He thought he was so lucky. 
He came within a couple of seconds of getting caught. But of course, the story isn't over yet. The next morning, he was woken up by someone ringing his doorbell again and again. They wouldn't give up ringing his doorbell. So he went to check who it was. And who it was were two policemen. And uh, first of all, he was scared. But then he thought, well, I'm not driving now. They can't do anything. And so the policeman just said, Sir, would you mind if we look at your garage? He said, no, nothing in my garage, just my car. So he went over to his garage. He was still wearing his, his dressing gown. And he's still got a bit of a hangover. But his hangover disappeared immediately once he opened the door of the garage. Because in the garage, it wasn't his car. There was a police car. <laughs> He'd been so drunk when they said, Sir, get in your car and go home. He got in the wrong car. <laughs> got in one of theirs. And then there's this one, one monk over in Melbourne. I remember talking to his father, and his father was a policeman. He said, yeah, that happens. They get in the wrong car, you know, when they get stopped at the road traffic block. We have to sort of drag them out and say, this is not your car, and you can't drive anything. Not your car, not our car, certainly. So that's the trouble when you take too much alcohol. And to save all of your money, and to save all of your time so you don't have to uh, worry about going to court and stuff. That's why we have Ajahn Brahm's party, which I hope you can have lots of fun, but also you don't have to worry about driving home because you've got no alcohol in your system at all. Although it's very hard to find out you know, where alcohol is. Because I still remember three monks, actually they were all senior at the time, senior monks, at a Christmas time. And most of them were Canadian. Because I remember this, they got some Canadian wine gums from one of their parents for Christmas. And wine gums, they're just sweets. That's what I thought. But then after they shared them out with each other, the, th the three Canadian monks, they started acting very strange. I don't know if you've ever seen a monk who was drunk, but it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> and all it was because in those wine gums, they actually did have alcohol. And because monks are just so sensitive, I haven't had any alcohol in almost 50 years. So if I had a wine gum with some alcohol in it and I didn't know, that would make me go a bit sort of groggy. I wouldn't be able to sit in a, a, a sit still. I wouldn't be able to walk in a straight line. And I start to speak in a sort of a very strange way. I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> but anyway, uh, because it was not intentional, I didn't read the instructions. But I always remember just how even a little bit of alcohol could affect them so much. And on a serious note, that I remember, you know, I can make jokes about many things, but one, probably not just one, but the worst uh, funeral which I've ever taken in Western Australia was of a, a young Chinese girl. She's about 21, 22. And she had uh, come from mainland China. Her family members, her mother and father, had worked so hard to be able to send her to university and then to Curtin University. And she graduated. She worked so hard and the parents were obviously so pleased with their daughter. They managed to scrape together enough money to get a flight to Perth to come to their daughter's graduation. And when they came to their daughter's graduation, uh, it was like the, a dream come true. Their only daughter had graduated, had got a life. And then, while they were walking down the high street in Gosnells, a drunk person lost control of their car, and in front of the two parents, they slammed into their daughter and killed her in front of the parents' eyes. 
and I did the funeral service for her. And that was one of the saddest funeral services I've ever done. The parents couldn't understand any English. You could see they were totally confused that once they had a daughter, now they saw, saw her mowed down by a drunk driver in a car in front of their eyes and all their hopes, all their dreams of the future were shattered. So when I saw that, yes I do, I tell jokes about people drunk driving, but also there's a serious side as well, so please don't do it. Tell your friends about stories such as that. There's other ways, you know, if you are you know, silly enough to want to go and take some alcohol, please don't drive a car on the way home. You never think there's going to be an accident, but there's too many and the chances are just not worth it. So anyway, uh, now we're going to start our little uh, uh, New Year's Eve party. So I have a job for... Eddie, you've just come in. Could you please come in here? I have a job for you. Come, 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 come. So there is numbers here, and I want you to give, an, actually we probably need two people. Could you also get up and give numbers to people? You can go that side, friend, or you can go this side. So, a number, one to each person. And you can't, I'm going to split you all up, and then after you got your number, then we're going to get all the ones to go together, all the twos to go together, all the threes to go together, fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eight, nines. And you have to move. Oh, you're doing it, okay. Actually, how many people are in here? Probably 200? I don't know. Anyway, we'll soon find out. And even the kids have to move. They can't stay with their mummy or daddy. Please, please take a number each. And you find the sixes and nines, they've got a line underneath them. The line has to be on the bottom, so you know the difference between a six and a nine. Now these numbers, for the Thai people, these are not lottery numbers. <laughs> so you're not going to win any money. <laughs> so please don't give them an importance which they don't deserve. And once we have those numbers, then we're going to ask you to congregate together introduce each other and then afterwards uh, we've got this little um, some questions about Buddhism and oh yes and some wonderful prizes the main prize this is only going for the people who uh, win there's been nine groups this is for the winning group it's going to be these specially signed. I only signed these this afternoon. New Year's Eve happiness certificates. <laughs> signed by me. And it reads, New Year's Eve happiness license. You need a license for everything these days. This document officially grants the bearer a perpetual right to be happy for any reason or no reason at all, without let or hindrance, from 0, 0, 001 a.m. on the 1st of January, 2024. Let no one infringe this right, signed Ajahn Brahm. So if anyone infringes the right for you to be happy, they get in big trouble with me. So only the winning team gets that. And also, for the people who probably give the standout answers, I've got them here somewhere. These are left over from last year. Checks. Are monks allowed to have checks? They're allowed to have these checks. There's only two of these. And this is drawn of, of a bank which never goes bust, it never gets brought out, it never gets brought over. This is Karma Bank. <laughs> a division of Samsara Insecurities Limited. This is dated a few years ago, 31st of December 2019, 
but it is still valid. Pay against this check to whoever gets one of these, I'll write the name there, the sum of merit points. So we don't do dollars or pounds or, or stuff like that or ring it. This is pay against this check to whoever it is, the sum of merit points, one million only. <laughs> one million merit points. And what can you do with these? What you do with these, it says, payable in your next life. <laughs> so there's two of these available for lucky people. Hello? Ah, oh, this is payable in your next life. Doesn't get me in trouble. <laughs> okay. So of all the, oh, I haven't even passed all the, the, Okay, I think most of the... You got any numbers left? Okay, please. You won't have a chance to get any one million merit point checks or happiness licenses or anything else if you don't have one of the numbers. Is there many left? You better take them, otherwise no chance for any merit points. Excellent. There's some over there. Okay. So, now you can leave. There's plenty of chairs around. So, can I have number ones in this place over here? Number one in this little corner. Anyone who's got a number one in this corner? Say hello to each other. Number two, next to them on that side, on the chairs. Number ones, number twos, number threes in the center, fours, fives, six behind them, seven behind them, uh, eight and nine. <laughs> this is always confusing. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, and in the back, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. And please say hello to each other, introduce each other, who you are, because many of you wouldn't have met each other before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine at the back. Nine over the back there. Okay, bad ones. Now, can you put the other way around? Fold them all. Fold them. I'm going to get to give them out, but they're kind of, yeah. Now I'm going to be giving out the questionnaire once you are organised. That might take forever, but let's give it a try. These are secret questions. So I've got to be fair to everybody. No, that's good enough. And I want you to, can you walk and give one to each group? Three to the ones. Three to the twos, three to the threes. I'm oh, no, actually never going with two, isn't it? Two to each group. You've got, 
You get 80. 80. Yeah, it's right. Two. Two. Two to each. Okay. We're getting close. <laughs> now you've got to take her one. If you don't take one, you can't have a chance to win merit certificates. Actually, I should have got demerit certificates as well. And give it out to anybody who cheats. <laughs> doesn't play according to the rules of the game. There you go. Wow, you did a lot. How many you got there already? Now, once these questions are given out, you have to keep them folded until I ring the gong. And once the gong is rang, then you can open them and the group together can discuss what the answers are. And I'll give you maybe five or about five minutes or six minutes. And then once you think you have the answers, then I will ask each group to say what answers you've got. There'll be two sheets for each group, exactly the same, just so you don't have to spend too much time reading them. They're in English, I do apologize. None of the, the questions are in Bangla or in uh, Bahasa or Sanskrit. Here we go. That's it. So would you offer them out? And I'll be looking. You can't open the secret questions. This, this is group one. Wow, so many group ones. Group twos. You can give two to each one, yeah. Group threes. Group fours. Group fives. There's only one in group five. Goodness gracious. <laughs> And group six. Group seven. Over there. Don't have a look yet. <laughs> Turn it over so you can't see it. Is that the questions? Yeah. Turn over. Otherwise you get advantage. Eight, nine, and nine. Very good. So you give them all out now? Eight. Hasn't got one. Where did eight go? Goodness gracious. Oh, okay, here we go. No, no, this. Someone's got two people got eights. Hey, there was nine, it was 18. Oh my goodness. Okay, who's group one? Have you got two sheets? Group two has got two sheets. Group three. Group four has got two sheets. Group five, two sheets. Group six, two sheets. Group seven. Group eight, you got two sheets, group eight yet? Have they? What's happening? Group nine. Okay. Has group eight got their sheets now? Goodness gracious. Okay, well look, but one of the other groups, 
the two sheets are exactly the same. So can we have maybe the group seven over there? Just hand one sheet. You got it? On, you got them already? Okay, now give it to the. Okay, give it to group eight. Where's group eight? Over there. Have you got any sheets? You have. Okay, they found their sheets. <laughs> okay. Now, here we go. Are you ready? No cheating. Go. <laughs> Please work together to see if you can <laughs> find out the answers. He said participate. minutes <laughs> hard this is the this is the easy ones wait till you see the next ones Okay, the time is ticking down. Ah, uh, they're still talking, so I'm fine, I'm just getting joy. At least they get involved, which is good. And the kids as well. Sorry? Not so many time people. No, there's a couple. Yeah. They come afterwards. They come tomorrow as well. Okay, the time is ticking down. Are you ready? Finished? Okay. Here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, a half, a quarter. <laughs> Okay. <coughs> just in. That's okay, they can join. Yeah, those who are late can join any group. So, the question number one. Can a stream winner take a selfie? 
Now, as dream winner, one of the reasons we form this question is a dream winner has got no self and they know they've got no self. So how can a dream winner take a selfie? Any objection? Sorry? His non-self can take a picture of his non-self. A non-selfie? A non-selfie, yeah, but it didn't say we can take a selfie. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why that when you serve us food, we can't choose, we can't just take the food ourselves. It has to be offered to us because, you know, some of the monks are advanced and you can't have a self-service if you've got no self. So that's why we need you. Okay. okay, so how many of you put the answer no? Number one, okay. So please remember that's a tick. You didn't answer it? Okay, I'll trust you. Next one. How many years has Ajahn Brahm existed? Who said that? Did you say 49? The answer is 39. <laughs> because you're not an Ajahn until you've spent 10 years as a monk. <laughs> okay. That's good. Next one should be very easy for you. And I'm glad that Ksenia, our president, is on retreat, having a nice quiet time, because if you all got this question wrong, she'd be very upset. How many years has the BSWA been established? Six. Yeah, we've been trying to celebrate that. And any emails or newsletters, you see 50 down there. How many of you got that wrong? <laughs> oh. Okay. This next question is always interesting. I did check this up on the internet, it's true. Which is bigger in land area? Land area. Damasara or the Vatican City? You know how much power the Vatican has? Which is bigger? That's right, Damasara 583 or 63? 583. The Vatican is only 121 acres. It's really small. So I expect great things of Dhammasara in the future. <laughs> we might elevate uh, Ajahn Hasapanya to be the Pope. <laughs> I can only tell such things when she's not here. Now the next question is a tough one. How many books has Ajahn Brahm written? It's an important thing for me to know because remember I keep telling that story that a Vietnam, no, it was a, a Japanese monk told me years and years ago that anyone who writes a book has to spend the next seven lifetimes as a donkey. <laughs> so how many books have I written? <laughs> And the answer is two. Those two books, Opening the Door of Your Heart and The Mindfulness Bliss and Beyond. All the other books are either translations or uh, they are, what they call it, um, transcriptions of some of the talks which I've given, all put together. But what I actually wrote was just two. So I've only got 12 lives, no, 14 lives as a donkey. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Too much work. Okay, so now I want to know the scores because there are three teams are going to be eliminated as we go to round uh, two. They're going to go to cessations. So, 
Group one, how many did you get out of five? Three. Three. Group two, one. <laughs> Group three? Four. Four. Wow. Five's got three. Six? Four. Seven? Group eight, two, group nine got three. Okay, how many, how many of the groups got four? That's group, no, who, who got four? Seven, three, and who else? Only two groups got four. Three groups, okay, you're eliminated. Look, I told you many times, we don't want to win sports or come top. We're so compassionate and kind that we always want to come last so we can have a much easier life. So, so for those of you who think you were winners, you're the first to get eliminated. So we've got just six groups left. <laughs> Those of you who've been here before know that Ajahn Brahm is always up to such tricky stuff. Keep that in mind. This is round two. Okay. Oh yeah, we've got to fold them up. So we're doing now round two. There should be just be six groups who can enter round two. Those smart Alex get eliminated. <laughs> okay. And these are tougher questions on round two. <laughs> but don't worry, because if it's tough questions and you don't get them right, you can still win so much. But of course, you all know the rules can change. That's right, it's mine. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Now, there's only one for each of the groups this time, and six. So, would you, those groups who are still in, could you put your hand up? Now don't cheat. <laughs> okay, don't look at it yet. Over there. <laughs> it's good. Three, should be six groups left. Let's come over there. It gives exercise for my attendant monk. <laughs> you never find me walking all over here. Okay, it's more? Two more? Okay. One, one in the back? Okay, this is only for... You got one already? Okay, one over there. So what groups are left? Who was eliminated? Who was eliminated last year? Number three? Six is gone. And? Seven, three, six, and seven. Yeah, they're very unlucky numbers. <laughs> so now group number one, two, four, five, eight and nine. Are you ready? Are your brains poised? <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> They're harder questions, so I'll give you a bit longer. Many of yours. I like this. 
In the groups three, six and seven, you're so lucky. You don't have the stress of trying to find the best answers. To lose at the early stage is always the best. You did excellent, well done. <laughs> okay. We have two, three or four minutes. The time is ticking. Tick. Tick, 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 tick. Time is flying past. Are you ready? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. These are easy ones. Okay. Hope you all got your answers ready. So the answer to the first question, true or false? Are you ready? Buddhists must always speak gently, true or false? True or false? Buddhists must always speak gently, explain. The answer is false. It's wonderful when Buddhists don't speak at all, especially on <laughs> retreats. <laughs> so the right answer is false. It does say Buddhists must always, so it's false. <laughs> uh, the next one, can a fully ordained Buddhist monk have a gold tooth? But are we not, we're not supposed to have gold, are we? Are we? No, the answer is yes. If you already got it before you ordain, then you can keep it. We do have one monk. <laughs> we do have one monk down in Albany, you know, Venerable Mudu, has got a gold tooth. And so he asked me, should he have that taken out when he becomes a monk? No, as long as he got it before he was a monk, then that's okay. So the answer is yes, he can. Now the next one, this question you know, came from Venerable Dayalu sitting next to me. A very good question. To whom did the Buddha's first disciples go for refuge? And the, who the first disciples, they were two lay people. So the answer is, they went for refuge to the Buddha and the Dhamma. There was no Sangha at that time. So the answer was to the Buddha and Dhamma. Who got that one right? Yay, you're really clever. The next one, I hope you know this one, because I've made so much speeches about this. Who called, he became very famous, who called a fully enlightened Buddha a shaveling, that fake ascetic? And that was Ajahn Sujato's translation. Who called a fully enlightened Buddha a shaveling, that fake ascetic? <laughs> Sorry? No. That was 
uh, Jyoti Pala, who later was, was reborn as uh, Siddhartha Gautama, that's our Buddha. In a previous life, he didn't even recognize Kasapu the Buddha, who lived in the same region as he did. And he never wanted to see him, he called him a, a shaveling, that fake ascetic. Eventually, his friend Gatikara forced um, Jyotipala to come and listen to Kasapa the Buddha. And once he listened to him, he became so uh, inspired that Jyotipala became a monk himself. At first, he started by calling him a fake ascetic, and then eventually he ordained under Kasapa. And then he was reborn as Siddhartha Gotama, and he became our Buddha. That's in the Gatikara Sutta. So if you got that right, thank you, you've been listening to me. No one else has. <laughs> Anyone else got that right? Oh, oh, wow. The next one is even more difficult. After the Buddha, who was the best teacher? What did you say? Ajahn Brah. Ajahn Brah, oh come on. <laughs> so Puta, no. This was also a very uh, important question and answer. When the Buddha passed away, he, before he passed away he said, your teacher once I pass away will be the Dhamma Vinaya. So the best teacher was not a person was the teachings. And that, that was a, did you get that one right? Wow, you guys are really smart. <laughs> no. So, group one, how many did you get right? How many? One. Group two, how many did you get right? You got three. Group four? You only got two. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Five. You got two. Six. Oh, you got rolled in, gone. Eight. One and two thirds. One and two thirds. Okay. And group nine. You got one. Two. Okay. So this time, I told you I always change the rules. So it is the ones who got worse. They're the ones eliminated. So the one who got one, the one who got one and two thirds, that's group one, is eliminated. Uh, group eight is eliminated. We've got two, got, what was it, group four and five, and no, five and nine, both got two. Is that correct? Okay, which two did you get right? Number one and number three. Oh yeah. Who the Buddha's first time go for refuge? You got one and three right. Okay, that's pretty good. Two and three. Oh, two and three. Okay. But what about group nine? Which one did you get right? The same. same group. And group five? One and five. One and five. Actually, the five was the best answer, I think. Okay, I'm going to prefer five. So, group one, five and eight. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's one of my privileges. They call me here, not the spiritual director of the BSW way, but the spiritual dictator, yes. Okay, so we've got one, five and eight of the last three remaining. Hey? 
That's right, isn't it? You got the one who got three, three, and one of the twos. So you haven't been eliminated yet, Chris. <laughs> it's not that easy to get eliminated. <laughs> okay, so we've got the next round three, the final round. So, must be able to do it this way. Okay, you can take it off. You won it. For these wonderful prizes of New Year's happiness license. Everyone else will have to be miserable. Okay. Well, three over there. Hey? Eh? One, five, and eight. So you didn't get one? One, five, and eight, supposed to. Seven were eliminated a long time ago. One. Oh, yeah, one was eliminated, yeah. So it is two, four, and oh yeah, that's right. Two, four, and seven. No, two, four, and nine. Is that right? Yeah, two, four, and nine. <laughs> I think I'm going to get eliminated. <laughs> Group number two, you got three right, correct? So you should have uh, the round three. You got one, two, yeah. Four, you got one? And number nine? You got, have you got a... But have you got one? Yes. Great, okay, so it's all worked out. <laughs> okay, so come on. Have a look at... <laughs> Two, four, nine. These are tough questions. For those who haven't got the question sheet, I'll tell you what the questions are, and then in a few minutes we'll hear what the answers are. The first question for those interested, who was the first to see the Buddha? Who was the first to see the Buddha? Two. Who served as the doctor of the Buddha? Three, how many precepts are there for practicing lay Buddhists? Four, what psychic power did Ajahn Chah most excel? And last of all, the last question, can stream winners be concerned about winning at quizzes? Do people on the path to enlighten worry about win winning anything? <laughs> Are you ready? One or two minutes. And then the New Year's happiness licenses get passed out. We should have a, a couple of questions there just in case there's a tie. Okay. okay. Are you ready? Coming, coming. Okay, let's see what you've got. The first question. Who was the first to see the Buddha? Ah, just answers, but it's very deep uh, question, deep answer. 
because it was based on the statement, he who see, or the one who sees the Buddha sees the Dhamma. The one who sees the Dhamma sees the Buddha. So the first actually to see the Buddha be the one who sees the Dhamma, the Buddha himself. Did anyone get that right? No. <laughs> you got it right, did you? She did. Wow. Buddha, excellent. Did you get it right? No. Number three, number, which is the other one? Where are they? Okay, anyway, only one people got it right. Who served as the doctor of the Sangha? No, it's only part of the Sangha Jivaka served. That's not the right answer. How many times did I mention that story of that disciple who decided to keep the five precepts and he always said, when he was served alcohol at work, he said, no, I can't have alcohol, I'm a Buddhist. And his friends said, oh, Buddha is wonderful, wonderful, let go, come on, let go, have a drink. So he changed his excuse. He said, no, I can't have a drink because of doctor's orders. And I said, you can't keep one precept by breaking another. You know, you're not under the orders of the doctor. He said, yes, I am, of the doctor Buddha. The Buddha compared himself to being a doctor. So it's under doctor Buddha's orders. So who served the doc as the doctor of the Sangha? Still serving the Buddha. How many got that right? Did you? You did. Yay, smart. How many precepts are there for practicing Buddhists? What about eight precepts? Even that's wrong. Not really, because that's more like you wear brown robes as ten preceptor. But no, there is, these are all tricky questions, I admit that. <laughs> nine precepts, nine precepts, because the third precept for five preceptors is Karmesu Michachara, that's not having any sexual misconduct, and the Third precept for eight preceptors is different. It means not having any sensual contact at all with the other gender. So there is actually nine precepts for lay people. You take five of those as a five preceptor, eight of those as an eight preceptor. So the answer is nine. Did anyone get that right? <laughs> Eight precepts, yeah, and the first five are not the same as the five precepts. One of them is different, which means that there are nine precepts in all. Five of those you take as a five preceptor, another eight you keep as a uh, as an eight preceptor. And there's one as an eight preceptor you don't take, and that's the, uh, the central restra sexual restraint because you know, you're know you not on the eight precepts, but it's on the five precepts. It's a different precept. I got my work cut out next year. <laughs> Okay, eight minus five is three. <laughs> At what psychic power did Ajahn Chah most excel? We've only got two groups, what are they? They haven't lost their reading. Too many bits of paper, I'll tell you. This is only for group two, four, and nine. What psychic power did Ajahn Chah excel? Group two. Sorry? Mind reading, uh, group four? 
Mind reading? Group nine? Well done. That's the correct answer, teaching the Dhamma. That's why Ajahn Chah was famous. And I would put my hand up, because he read my mind before, I know that. But what he really excelled at was a great teacher of the Dhamma. At Ajahn Chah's funeral service, he was televised, and as he was being televised, the, there was a couple of senior monks there, I think including Ajahn Sumato and another couple of senior monks, and the interviewer asked them online, they were not online, so on air, live to air, did you see Ajahn Chah? You actually see it yourself, um, excelling in any one of the psychic powers. And the monks were silent, and one of the lay supporters put their hand up and said yes. And everyone went quiet. And he said, what did you actually see him do? He said, I saw him teaching the Dhamma to thousands and thousands of people. And all the other monks were just so upset. Oh, I wish I'd have said that. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the only psychic power which the Buddha praised, the ability to teach. So, last question. Can stream winners be concerned about winning at quizzes? No. So anyway, let's see. The answer is no, of course. So the group two, how many did you get right? Oh my goodness. <laughs> group four. You got three. Goodness. Group nine. Ah, no explanations. <laughs> it says explain. It does just say, <laughs> you, you got one. Only one. All right. Oh, that's, that's going to be tough now. So, so what was your uh, excuse? What were you trying to explain? Isn't which question was this? Okay. Okay. You still only get two though. <laughs> so group four got three. Group nine got two and group two got one. And of course the winner is not the one who comes top, not the one who comes bottom, but the middle way. <laughs> so of course, <laughs> group nine are the winners. Yay. Okay, so would you please come up to receive your happiness licenses. You better come up quick. Your prize, happiness license. How many of you are there in the group? <laughs> now I expect you to be really happy. No, I can't give it away. I can put your name on it afterwards. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Of course, yeah. Thank you. The great sacrifice. I'm guaranteeing your happiness forever. Here we go. Be happy. Go on. Oh, you can have this one first. Excellent. Here we go. 
How many of you are there? That's why you won, yeah. Oh my goodness. I haven't got, have I got 20 yet? I think I've got 16. Here we go. I'll have to get some more out for you later. Karma checks, is that gonna? Oh, yeah, we can do that. Almost. We've only got one left. <laughs> so, only one left. So, you, you, you want to. Okay, come here. So, instead. Oh, you can give it away. Now you come here. <laughs> well, he gave it away, so he hasn't got anything, so he's the one who gets this one. <laughs> one million merit points. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> so I also had a few other prizes. So was the, the group four? How many of you are there? <laughs> How many is that? Ten. Okay. Well, come over here. You have to share these presents out. One is a stinky candle. I mean, a fragrant candle. <laughs> Here we go. It's for you. I've only got one of them. Who's the youngest? <laughs> You're the youngest? Okay. That's <laughs> yours. <laughs> Who's a Buddhist Santa Claus? <laughs> come on, Chris. Uh, Chris, you can come. Okay. No. It's very rare to find a Santa Claus who's meditating. And for those in this group, if you can tell me, you know what this is? You know the one inside the other? Now I've left something inside of this one. I took what was usually inside of it, a little one, a baby one, and I put something else inside. So in this group, what do you think I put inside? Yeah, yeah come on. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, brilliant. Open it up and see. She's a genius. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Open it up and see. Still more to go. Yes, the message. You know where I got the message from? The newspaper. Yes, the newspaper. She's a genius. <laughs> What's it say? Don't worry, kids. Surely this one's going to be better. Yeah, 2024. <laughs> Best wishes for 2024 from Father Time. Excellent. Okay, it's yours. No, the whole thing. And this is a cool one, which goes right in the centre. And this is the box it comes in. Here we go. I put it like that. <laughs> I've got to put it together again properly. <laughs> and so all the, rest, the others in that group who came second, please come up because 
I've got these little fridge magnets. Relax to the max. How many of you are in the group who didn't get a present? How many? I've got heaps of them. <laughs> One, three, four. Look, you always get lots of joy giving presents to me. This is my way of paying back. There's that's one, two, three, four, five. You've got to take one. Okay. Please come and take one. You're a genius. She kept the team alive. <laughs> what did you do? Try, try and kill it. I just tried to keep, give them a bit of morale. Ah, oh, good, excellent. And I guess the goal too. Okay. You know this one million merit point check? Who do you think it should go to? I oh, know, this one's for you. for you. I can give it to. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Who was really smart in your group? No one. <laughs> Who? I think actually, the, I think, sorry? Come here. I mean, they were very smart. but you can't use this until your next life. So you have to wait for a long, long, long time. <laughs> okay, so thank you all for joining in. I have many more of these. If any of you wish for one, please come up and you can get these little fridge max magnets relaxed to the max for your fridge. And I think especially for the you are really stressed out, I know I've talked to many of you who get stressed out, Put this in your fridge. If you can't put it on your fridge, put it on your head. <laughs> so you never need to get stressed out again. Thank you all for joining in. Hopefully that just broke the ice, even though it's a hot evening. And now you can please have some, something to eat and some fellowship. At, uh, this is now 10 o'clock. And then later on we can have a little meditation and talk and chanting at midnight. Excellent. So thank you all for joining in. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.